We will continue in a cranial to caudal or proximal to distal fashion. With that being said, the first nerve that we encounter is this very small nerve here that will be going towards and through the inguinal canal, which is the genitofemoral nerve. Now, if we look within the pelvic cavity itself, we will see this very large nerve right here going towards the external and internal obturator muscles. That's going to be the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve goes through the obturator foramen and comes out distally here to supply all of the adductor muscles of the leg, including the adductor, pectineus, gracilis, and external obturator muscles. Next, we will look at the saphenous nerve, which we see right here, which again runs with the saphenous artery. If we find the saphenous, saphenous nerve and trace it proximally, the saphenous nerve will lead us directly to this very large bundle that is coming through the iliopsoas muscle, that right there is the femoral nerve. Inside as well, we need to find the pelvic nerve. And in my opinion, the best way to do that is to come up here. We need to find the caudal mesenteric artery to direct us to the caudal mesenteric ganglion and plexus. From there, we find the right and left hypogastric nerve. And if we trace the hypogastric nerve caudally, it will lead us to the area of the pelvic plexus. The pelvic plexus is a combination of the hypogastric nerve, which carries sympathetic innervation, and the pelvic nerve, which comes from the sacral aspect of the spinal cord. So that's going to be carrying parasympathetic innervation. So the pelvic nerve joins with the hypogastric nerve to form this kind of network of nerves on the lateral aspect of the rectum, which is known as the pelvic plexus. Now let's come to the lateral aspect of the leg. Here we can see a very large nerve that's coming through, it's actually been cut here, but it's coming through this muscle which is the deep gluteal muscle, and it's coming through the deep gluteal to the tensor fascia lata. This nerve is going to be the cranial gluteal nerve that supplies the middle gluteal, deep gluteal, piriformis, and tensor fascia lata. Now just called to that is where we see the superficial gluteal muscle, and if we see a nerve running to that superficial gluteal muscle, that will be the caudal gluteal nerve. The caudal gluteal nerve only innervates the superficial gluteal muscle. So the cranial and caudal gluteal nerves are branches of the pudendal nerve. And the pudendal nerve itself will continue caudally towards the ischiorectal fossa along with your internal pudendal artery. So again, here we see the pudendal nerve. And that will be giving off a distinct branch, which we don't see here in this pro section. But it'll be a distinct branch coming directly to the external anal sphincter muscle, which we see right here. The nerve that supplies the external anal sphincter is the same name as the artery that does, and that's the caudal rectal nerve and artery. The pudendal nerve will then continue towards the area of the perineum and usually give off multiple perineal nerves. The other branch of the pudendal is going to be this large nerve, which is actually going down towards the penis and will be running along the dorsal aspect of the penis as the dorsal nerve of the penis. In this region, we can also see the sciatic nerve, this very, very large nerve right here that is supplying muscular branches to the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. It comes over the femur here 
and will then split as we continue to go distally into the common fibular nerve, which if we move here to the lateral aspect a little far distally, we see that that common fibular nerve comes in right here near that fibularis longus and long digital extensor muscles. A lot of times it may even dive in right in between the fibularis longus and the lateral digital flexor muscle. Here the fibularis longus has been removed in order to show the branching of the common fibular nerve, which includes this superficial branch known as the superficial fibular and the branch that will be going deep to supply muscles in this area, aka the extensor muscles, as the deep fibular nerve. Off the common fibular, we also get this nerve that runs laterally into the biceps femoris, and that will be the lateral cutaneous sural nerve. This small little muscle that we see running on the deep aspect of the biceps femoris is the caudal cruel abductor. Now we just talked about the common fibular nerve. The other branch of the sciatic is the tibial nerve. As we look, we see the common fibular coming off, coming to the lateral aspect of the crus. The tibial nerve will come off and go in between the two heads of the gastrocnemius. It's usually right around this area that we see this small branch coming off of the tibial nerve and coming along the gastrocnemius, and that's going to be the caudal cutaneous sural nerve. As I just said, the tibial nerve comes distally and pierces in between the two heads of the gastrocnemius and will come out on the medial aspect in between the medial head of the gastrocnemius and the superficial digital flexor muscle. The tibial nerve moves distally and it's at this point just on the plantar aspect of the tarsus, it splits into your medial plantar nerve and the lateral plantar nerve, which will actually go underneath the tendons here to pop out on the lateral aspect of the foot, which we can see a little bit better if we just open up these tendons here. So we have the medial plantar nerve on the medial aspect and the lateral plantar nerve on the lateral aspect. 